Hey all you mystery cats and meddling kids, it's your girl Pammy Chanel back with another video. This is my second time recording this video. Today we're going to be talking about J-Lo and this halftime documentary that she had out. And I was going to talk about a whole lot of, of other things that she said within this documentary. But to keep this short and sweet, the real reason why I had a problem with this documentary is because of the comments that she made about Shakira. Now, first of all, if you're going to do Super Bowl, you need to know the history of the Super Bowl halftime shows. And historically, we have not always had solo one um, person performing at every Super Bowl halftime. Back when I was growing up, and Jennifer Lopez should know this because she is older than I am, we had multiple people performing at the same time. The first really, really big Super Bowl halftime show was, of course, 1993, Michael Jackson, when he played um, during the Cowboys game. And I can't tell you who the Cowboys played against because I was only focusing on the Cowboys last time they won a Super Bowl, but I digress. Before then, we had actual school marching bands and there was one time where there was some school marching bands and New Kids on the Block came out there because they were really, really big. There was also the 1992 when um, Gloria Stefan was out there. And I think she was um, doing her song, one of the song that she did for the Olympics. Don't get me um, lying. Uh, check my, um, go back and check for me. But I think that's when she had did it. Bottom line is, like I said, if you're going to perform for the Super Bowl, you need to know the history of the Super Bowl. In the early 2000s, we had Aerosmith and NSYNC perform together. They were the two headliners. They weren't invite. They did invite people, but they they were the two headliners. Um, another time back in the uh, early 90s, well, early to mid 90s, we had Clint Beck, Travis Trent. Um, Winona Ryder and, and, or, and her mother, the, the Judds, and Tanya Tucker, they all shared the stage during a Super Bowl. We had a Motown salute during the, uh, or tribute during the Super Bowl. So to say that, you know, this is a, something for just a solo artist is a bold-faced lie. But I want to get into the actual reason why I think that they put Shakira up there with her. Now, Jennifer Lopez really needs to check her manager. His name is Benny Medina. I'm going to call him out because he was the one that made the comment saying that, you know, normally it's only a solo act. If your manager can't understand these things and how business works, he don't need to be your manager. Maybe that's why you don't have that Grammy. Maybe why that's you are the reason why you don't have that Oscar or that Globe Award that you want so much you were talking about in here. Maybe it's because he's not steering you in the right direction as far as what roles to take and what roles not to take. But I'm going to move on from that one. And I'm sorry, guys. My voice is like really, really out of it. I'm trying to make this as, as to the point as possible. Now, I went through and I looked at only from the two 2010s because I don't have time to go back and, you know, look at all of the Super Bowl performances and who performed and stuff let's just say that before the 2010s early 2000s and from um i guess till 1993 or 92 i'll say 92 even though gloria stefan did have a marching band with her too um beyond that most of these guys who did the super bowl these were big time people in the music industry um shania twain she had sold 20 million albums at the time and she still shared her stage with no doubt. And they were both headliners during that time. So you talk about a voice like Shania Twain, and then you talk about Jennifer Lopez, and Jennifer Lopez up here complaining. No, ma'am. The reason why they did not put her as a solo artist on the Super Bowl halftime show is because of the fact that Shakira has outsold her worldwide in record sales so if i really if i'm part of the super bowl and i really want to get that worldwide reach during the game 
because football here in America or America football as a lot of countries say really is not that big in other countries but if but the halftime shows tend to be if it's a good performance now if I want to get somebody that I can reach worldwide who is selling big time records then I'm going for Shakira now I'm not saying that J-Lo hasn't made any records or made any good record sales she sold over um this is editing Pam here I put in the wrong number Jennifer Lopez has sold approximately 26 million records but Shakira has made 80 million record sales and the only singer to even come in her stratosphere would be Gloria Estefan and Gloria Estefan has done the Super Bowl I want to say three times as a headliner and as a um I guess one of those special guests and most of the times when she's done it and I think all three times that she did it they were in Miami Gardens so anyone who's been to Miami knows that Miami is full of the Latino culture over there. They have a big Cuban population. Gloria Stefan is Cuban. They have a Dominican population over there. They have Colombians. It's a, a mixture down there. They have a, a lot of different cultures down there. It's a great vibe. But, you know, Shakira can put in a greater reach than J-Lo. I'm sorry. It, that's, that's what it is. When Rock Nation sat down and they looked... They looked at the numbers. Now, if she wants to compare herself to some of the people in the 2010s now, because she's the only group that's gone in 2020 so far, we don't know who they're going to do next year. But if she wants to compare herself to the 2010s and people who have been headliners for the Super Bowl show, you've got The Who, who has sold close to $300 million. You've got um, the Black Eyed Peas, who sold close to 80 million Madonna who sold 30 million 300 million excuse me or, or over Beyonce who has sold at the time that I looked at the document 160 million now that is not including Destiny's Child stuff Bruno Mars he's a little bit under her but keep it in mind Bruno Mars has only done um Three albums, I think, on his own. And this does not count anything Silk Sonic related. This doesn't even count the fact that he has written for other artists. Because if we threw that in there, oh my God, he definitely would be over her. Katy Perry, $135 million approximately. Uh, Lady Gaga, about $130 million approximately or more. Coldplay, approximately $100 million. Maroon 5, approximately $136 million. Justin Timberlake, approximately about $100 million. You know, and I could keep going on. Like, these people have sold albums. Their job is strictly, I'm going to record an album. I'm going to go on tour. I'm going to be done. There's no acting extra, which some of them do have, but acting is second. Their music is first. So, point blank, period. The reason why they thought that Shakira would be a great addition is because of the fact that they were trying to reach and show representation to the Latino community. And guys, look, I'm going to stop right here and say this right here before I even get off of here. I don't know what... I say Latino community. I don't like saying Hispanic, and I don't like saying the Latinx, and I don't want to disrespect y'all. Please put in the comments anything that is a better way to say, you know, because I, I don't know what everyone's um, culture is. So I just want to make sure that, you know, I know what to say, because... I don't want y'all mislabeling me as well. So just putting that side note in there. But bottom line, Jennifer Lopez, this whole Super Bowl halftime, you know, you want to make a political statement. Um, I understand and you wanted to follow in Beyonce's footsteps. But hey, Beyonce made that political statement and she was a guest. She wasn't even on. It was Coldplay that was doing the headlining, but it was Beyonce and Bruno Mars that stole the show. So to sit up here and to say that, hey, I couldn't make my political statement. I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. Uh-uh, J-Lo. I'm not buying it. You just want it to be front and center. But baby girl, it's not all about you. you you're not on that level as any of the people that I called out. But anyway, I'm going to end this video. If you like this video, please hit that like button. 
If you don't like the video, hit the dislike button. It doesn't bother me. It's still engagement. Also, if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. We would love to have you over here. And until next time, stay nosy and stay meddling.